In the last movie, you heard me talk a little bit about something called web fonts. And so in this movie, I'm going to discuss exactly what those are and how they integrate with a service that Adobe bought a few years ago called Typekit. And so we're still working in the same document. So if you don't have it open, it's the fonts document with the About Me page. And what we're going to do is just go up here to the fonts drop down. If you haven't already, insert your cursor right here where it says About Me. And then drop down this list right here. And we're going to scroll up until we see web fonts. And the web fonts section, if you click on add web fonts, that's going to bring up this little window right here. And it tells you you can add web fonts. And at the bottom, it says web fonts are served up by Typekit. And so Typekit is a service that Adobe bought a few years ago. It used to be just a standalone service where you could actually use modern typography online without having to worry about whether or not the end user actually had that font installed on their computer, which was so, so nice. Because traditionally, we've been limited, right, to things like Verdana or Helvetica or Arial or Times New Roman, and those are really boring typefaces to use in a web project, especially as we as designers start to grow and learn a little bit more about ourselves and our style, we want to branch out a little bit. And so using modern typography and varied amounts of typefaces really helps us sort of express who we are and also the projects that we're working on. And so inside of this dialog box, we have the ability to filter out the types of typefaces that we're looking for. And then underneath, you'll see results based on those criteria that you enter. So for instance, let's say that I wanted to see only the sans serifs. I can click right here and I can see the sans serifs. Well, maybe I want serifs instead. Or maybe I want slabs. Or maybe I need scripts. Or let's try black letter. Or we can do monospaced. And then we've got handwritten. And then we've also got decorative. You can see here there's a lot of different typefaces that we have the ability to use inside of our Muse project. So for me, in this particular project, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with a slab serif. And let's find something, I think Alpha Slab looks pretty good. If I choose that and make a selection and hit OK, what that's going to do now is it's going to sync that into Muse for me and allow me to use that. It's going to tell me that one font family was added to the web fonts menu. I'm just going to say don't show that again because I don't need to know that every time Muse comes up with a new typeface that I add in there. So now what I'm going to do is select this paragraph up here at the top, drop this down, and instead of using Helvetica, Let's look right here in the web fonts. Remember, I used Alpha Slab 1. If I choose this, that automatically converts that over to that Alpha Slab. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, now this paragraph underneath here, let's add another web font to go along with that. So let's put my cursor in there. Let's go up to the type menu here, and let's go add another web font. In this case, I want a sans serif font to go with that slab serif. I want something that's kind of thin. So let's scroll through here until we see something that catches our eye doesn't matter what it is necessarily. We just have to pick something. So if you like something better than what I choose here, that's totally fine. You just choose whatever suits you best. And so what I'm going to do is find, I think Josephine Sands looks pretty good. Let's choose that and hit OK. And so once I do that, it adds that to my menu. And so now I can make a selection of this and I can drop this down and I can choose Josephine Sands. And then I also have the ability to choose what style of that I like. So let's try the light first off, and let's see if that's readable. Uh, not really. <laughs> so let's, let's go back up there, and that's part of the process here. We just have to go through and make sure we figure this out. Let's try regular and see how much better that is. It's a little better. I think changing the color might help. So let's go ahead and select that, and let's choose black for the actual color. And then maybe even bumping up the font size a little bit to 16 might help us out a little bit. So that looks okay. Still not quite as bold as I need it to be. So let's go back up there and let's choose Josephine Sands and let's do semi-bold. And now when I do that, that looks much better. Kind of has a handwritten look, kind of a handwritten rhythm to it. I like that. And so I think this works well for a personal portfolio site. Now I may also select this and go up to the text menu and remove some of that space before. Because I think we've got enough space before it already. And that's going to look a little bit tighter, a little bit neater works better for me. So there you go. Anytime you need to sort of branch out a bit and use some more robust typographic options, try adding some of those web fonts, explore some of those, add them into your library and use them in your projects. They'll work just like any other typeface. Adobe Muse does all of the hard work on the back end, putting the code in place so that it knows how to call up these fonts and display them to everybody, regardless of whether or not the user has the font on their system.